Hello fellow crafters. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to start a bracelet using a D-shackle rather than a plastic buckle. The basics are still the same. Um, the big thing is on your jig you have to set it up a little bit different. Normally if you're using plastic buckles you would have a male end and a female end and you would just hook in for, and weave between your, your buckles. For this purpose you want to have a stationary D-shackle, one that pretty much stays on your jig all the time, and a place to put one that will not stay on your jig all the time. The one that's on your jig all the time, you want to fasten it through the loop, not through the pin, because you want to be able to pull the pin out to pull the cords off. On the other side, you're actually going to do through the pin. So you kind of have a, a opposite effect. I'm just going to put my D-shackle on here. I am making an 8 inch bracelet today, so I've got about 16 feet of paracord. It's already singed together, I'm assuming that most of us know how to do a decent singe. Um, if you're looking for how I do this kind of flat singe, uh, let me know and I can uh, do up a video for that. So starting this is pretty simple. You take your singe point, try and make sure it's relatively centered, because um, the idea is kind of to hide it. You're going to weave that, doesn't matter whether you go up or down, it's totally a uh, your preference. Once you have a little loop through, just grab your two loose ends and pull them through, and that will secure that to your D-shackle. Make sure that you're doing this to the side that will come off the jig. This is the D-shackle that will actually close your bracelet. On your stationary side, you're going to loop through. Now, depending on how you craft your bracelets at this point, you may be accustomed to starting your weave here and working this way. I still start here, but one of the questions that I've been asked recently is how I get so much cord into my bracelets, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is an 8-inch bracelet, so right now I have 16 inches here. If you loop through a second time, that gives you 32. When you bring them back up, that gives you, what, 46, or, yeah, 46 inches that are, is just in the core. The first stitch that I always do is what I call a floating stitch. It's not really anchored anywhere. What keeps it from sliding is the bracelet itself. So depending on the stitch that you're actually doing, depends on how you're going to start this. I'm going to use a common Cobra stitch, Solomon Bar, depending on how you know it. Um, simply because most of us know that weave. All right. Keep your lines separated so you can see what you're working with. If you notice, like I have all the blue on one side, I have all the black on another. It comes out that way. It's easier to see what you're doing, especially if you're doing two colors. If you're just doing one, then you just have to remember which one you're crossing. All right. So I use my finger as kind of a spacer. These loops right here are what actually are going to close your bracelet, so you want to make sure that they're big enough for the average Joe to work with to be able to slide that pin through and secure the bracelet onto their wrist. So using your finger, I'm right-handed, so I generally start with the right side. You're going to cross that over like you normally would. All right. When you bring your black side over like you normally would, go under and through your loop. Now tighten this down as much as you can on your finger. When it gets tight on your finger, go ahead and pull your finger out. And you'll see this basic stitch. What you want to do is kind of slide it up so that your core doesn't get real loose, and then tighten it down. It's not going to look like much at first, and you're going to notice that if you pull too tight, you're actually going to slide down. So you want it to be kind of loose. This is not the stitch that's going to lock it in place for you. The second stitch is going to do that. So you throw your second stitch in, and now all of a sudden, it's not going to go very far. It will still slide down. If you grab it and pull it, it's going to slide. And the point is to make sure that your core is still relatively taut, and make sure that your loops up here are still pretty big. So as you continue on through this, you end up with your standard Solomon bar.
I'm just going to weave this real quick and then I'm going to show you how to take it off. Actually, I think I'm only going to do halfway for time's sake. Okay, so when you get to the end of your bracelet, we'll pretend for time's sake that this is the end of your bracelet. Very simply, take your stationary side. As I said, I'm right-handed, very, very right dominant. Pull that pin out, and then you're going to have these nice two gorgeous loops that are there. When you pull your, your non-stationary side off, what you're going to end up doing is taking this side, weaving it, and, and just kind of circling it around. Paracord usually bends free well, however, I've noticed that bracelets done this way like to bend one way. Um, with the Solomon bar, they'll bend both ways. Um, depending on how tight you make your weave, when you bend it, you may want to put your fingers and pinch your, uh, your loops so that it doesn't slide up on you. Once you have the whole band full, it, it won't slide down, but it has the space to slide up, so you want to prevent that from happening. Once you have it in a round form, it won't go anywhere. And that was my email. Sorry. So, for the purpose of survival, when somebody needs to take this apart, they would simply take it off their wrist, pull the pin out, and then what I usually tell them is you kind of grab it here and then you pull. And what that'll do is it'll slide your weave back a little bit. You find that pretty little loop in the middle and grab the two cords that are connected to it. Pull that out. That gives you that. Grab the loop. Pull that off. And then you're left with this. Up at the very top, you'll see a loop that, two loops that go in. You grab those two, and then I'll actually pull your singe point through your entire weave. Now, if you're doing a millipede stitch, which is that really, really nice, quick release stitch, at this point, your bracelet would fall apart. If you're doing a Solomon bar, you're going to end up with this. And then all you have to do is pull it apart. And that's the end of the process. If anybody wants to know how to tuck ends, so that you never see a singe point, you never see the end of your bracelet, let me know and I can certainly do up a video for that as well. If there's any questions about this tutorial, please ask. This is my first one, so if I didn't cover all the fine points, please let me know.